Who is the best cavalry? Is there one cavalry that can beat all other cavalry? These are some of the questions we are going to try and answer today. We're going to be taking the best unit of each faction and pitting them against each other to see who's the strongest. There's going to be some pretty interesting finds along the way, such as which one of the most expensive cavalries in the game turns into one of the worst against a certain opponent, and which one of the top cavalries may be the worst investment for your rank up chevron bucks. So let us find out who's the best. Now, these tests are going to include Regiment of Renown units, but I know from the melee infantry version of Who's the Best, a lot of people said they didn't like that the Regiment of Renown units were in there. They wanted just the vanilla units of each faction, which is fine, but it doesn't really help us answer the question of who's the best cavalry in the game, which is the goal of this series. However, to cater for all of those who don't like the Regiments of Renown being in these tests, we are going to do a top 5 of the non-Regiments of Renown units against each other, and we'll also try out some of those non-Regiments of Renown units ranked up to max level 9 3 gold chevrons and pit them against the top raw units and see how they do. So there should be something for everyone. Now, of course, not every faction has cavalry that can compete here. Take Norska for example, they've only got Skirmish Cav. While it is technically Cav, it's going to get destroyed by even the cheapest of Shock Cavalries. And some factions just don't have cavalry. So Norska, the Dwarfs, the Skaven and the Vampire Coast will not be competing in these tests because they don't have a viable cavalry. And if you've seen the melee infantry version of this, you'll know how this is going to work. We're going to do 5 units against 5 units in a kind of best of 5 situation. If things are close, we'll run another best of five, and if it's close again, we'll run another best of five until we get a relatively definitive winner. The chosen cavalry for each faction is going to be the strongest of that faction, the one that can beat the other cavalries to prove it's the best. In this case for Bretonia, Grail Knights can beat the Companions and they can beat the Grail Guardians, so they will represent Bretonia, for example. The Lords will be left out of the way and no magic or abilities will be used to try and keep these as fair as possible and cavalries will just be charged straight into each other once and left there, which is kind of an odd thing to do for shock cavalry because that's not really how you're supposed to use them. However, we did test out trying to cycle charge into each other, but honestly the breakup of the units was just so messy and unpredictable all the time, it wouldn't really have given an accurate test. So we charged them in and just left them there and found that to be the fairest way to test. Do realize this is all just a bit of fun though and is by no means the perfect most fairest way to test units. Now, in alphabetical faction order, let's take a look at the units in the competition. Beginning with the Beastmen and the Sons of Horos, the cheapest unit in the competition and one of the lightest. For Bretonia, as I just mentioned, it's the Grail Knights, a fan favourite that have been around a long time and are well known as a damn strong cav. For the Dark Elves, the Knights of the Ebon Claw, the regiment of renowned version of the Dread Knights. They do hit hard with armor piercing damage, but are lacking an anti-large bonus. Will that hurt them, or will they be okay? To the Empire, and one of the sexiest units in the game, the Royal Altdorf Griffites. Regiment of renown of the powerful Demigriffs, and one of the most expensive units in the competition. For the Greenskins, the Broken Tusk Mob, the raw version of Orc Ball Boy Biggins. They've got plenty of armor and they hit hard, but they are one of the cheaper units in the competition, so how will they fare against those more expensive units? For the High Elves, it's the Fireborn, regiment of renowned Dragon Princes who are anti-large and do focus on the flames. Another one of the most expensive units in the competition. Lizardmen, bringing the Horned Ones to the table for their cavalry fight. Similar to the Ebon Claw Boys with armor piercing but no anti-large, and hey, they're mounted by a beefcake dinosaur rather than a scrawny elf, so maybe that'll help them rise above the rest. For the Tomb Kings, a monstrous cavalry, but a cavalry nonetheless, the Necropolis Knights with Halberds. They are anti-large and armor-piercing, and being undead will prevent them from routing. Will that help them win fights that they probably shouldn't win? To the Vampire Counts and one of the veterans of Total War Warhammer, the Blood Knights. They've been around since Warhammer 1 and were the strongest cavalry for a long time. How do they stack up though with all the new kids on the block? For the Chaos, a regiment of renown, again a very expensive one, the Swords of Chaos. They have crazy combat stats but are limited to a very small unit size at 18. Will those things help them or hinder them? They're also very clearly sponsored by Fire. 
And lastly, for the Wood Elves, it's the Wild Hunters of Kurnus, the regiment of renowned version of Wild Riders. They can hit pretty hard and have an anti-large bonus as well as magical attacks, but they are lacking in the armor department, which is obviously a dangerous game to play against some of these tough cavalries. So there we go, there's the 11 units that will be in this competition. Their wins and losses will be marked up on this graph so you can see how everyone does. We'll categorize them by the bottom three, the mid three and the top five. So let's go ahead and see who's at the bottom of the pile in the cavalry department. So we'll start out with the obvious potential answers, the cheapest units in the competition. In this case, the Sons of Gorus and the Broken Tusk Mob. They're both armor piercing, but the Tusk Mob have the advantage of being anti-large as well. And honestly, a lot of the Beastmen's abilities for this unit are kind of wasted in this kind of test. They've got Vanguard Deployment and Guardian, which are both useless in this situation. And they do have Perfect Vigor, which is a very powerful trait to have, but not much use when the fight's going to be over pretty quickly. As you can see, they're doing okay against the Tusk Mob, putting some damage on them, but ultimately they are going to run out of steam, and unfortunately for them aren't able to beat even the Broken Tusk Mob, who cost only 100 more than them, everyone else is 300 plus. So unfortunately for the Centigors, they are unable to beat anyone in this competition, and do get stomped all across the board. For the Broken Tusk Mob, can they fare much better, being one of the cheaper units as well, against these slightly more expensive Wild Hunters? They have the advantage of having Armor Piercing and the Bonus versus Large, while the Wild Hunters only have the Bonus versus Large. Of course, they've got other things going for them as well, like a Physical Resistance. It does look pretty good for them at the start of a lot of engagements. They do hit very hard on their charge and can put out a lot of damage very quickly. However, like many Orcs, their sustain can be a problem. They won't stick around forever. They don't have the greatest leadership and things like that. So unfortunately for the Broken Tusk Mob, they do struggle against a lot of tougher units. They do certainly put up a reasonable fight against a lot of the mid-range troops though, as there are four units that all cost the same amount, 1500 gold. The Dread Knights, the Horned Ones, the Grail Knights and the Wild Hunters, they all cost the same. So the fights between them should be relatively even, but of course there has to be one that's the worst. Unfortunately for the Tusk Mob, they couldn't beat any of them, so they are down the bottom with the Centigors. But who's going to be in the bottom three with them? Well, it is going to be one of these two, either the Wild Hunters or the Dread Knights. Pretty even exchange so far, maybe edging towards the Wild Hunters. They've got the anti-large bonus after all, but Dread Knights do have the armor piercing. Dark Elves as well may get their Murderous Mastery or Murderous Prowess on this unit, which could tip it in their favor at the end if it gets that far. The bar is nearly halfway full, but it's not going up very quickly because there's not a lot of units in combat, as these units are pretty small. And as we can see, the Wild Hunters seem to be getting the better of the Ebon Claw boys. And unfortunately for the Dark Elves, their best cavalry is one of the worst elite cavalries down there with the Tusk Mob and the Centigor Sons. So at the end of testing for the bottom three, we get the Sons of Gorus or Horus or whatever the frick they're called, Knights of the Ebonclaw and the Broken Tusk Mob. Sons of Gorus couldn't bring up any wins at all against anyone. The Broken Tusk Mob didn't do much better with only one win against the Centigors. So interesting that they're down the bottom of the cavalry fight when they're at the top of the melee game. And for the Knights of the Ebonclaw, they are the worst of the mid tier bunch that all cost 1500, but they are by no means far behind. So that is the bottom three of the best cavalries in the game. Now let's move on to the mid three, who you may be able to guess who it might be. Potentially in the running is the Wild Hunters, who we just saw take out the Ebonclaw. Oh, one poor elf just got absolutely murdered. Poor fella. And there's a flank in Bretonia. Whatever next. Taking on the Grail Knights here, a tough challenge for any cavalry. They do hit very hard. They've got a physical resistance with that blessing of the lady. And they are going to make very short work of these Wild Hunters. And these two units are supposed to be the same price. But this battle really doesn't make it look like they are because the Grail Knights absolutely stomp them and still have plenty of health left over. For the Grail Knights, they're firmly able to also stomp the Ebon Claw Boys and the Horned Ones, cementing themselves as the strongest unit of that 1500 cost group. So that leaves the Wild Hunters and the Horned Ones to duke it out to see who's the bottom of the mid tier. Well, let's find out. Place your bets. Who have you got? It's looking pretty even so far. Maybe a little bit more damage for the Horned Ones. They do have the armor piercing damage. But again, the Wild Hunters got their anti-large. So which is going to pay off more here? The anti-large or the armor piercing? It's looking a little bit rough for the Wild Hunters at this point. They might be looking good on maybe one of the matchups there. Kind of even at the end. Slowly losing it though, maybe. All the other ones not looking too good for the Wild Hunters. 
And with this kind of testing, the charge bonus is really going to play a big factor in who wins a lot of these matchups because you're going to get so much extra damage out of that if you've got 70 or 80 charge bonus. These two have kind of even charge bonuses, so no massive advantage for either side. But one Wild Hunters is broken, the others aren't looking too good, they're not going to be far behind, and the Cold Ones are going to take it, making the Wild Hunters the bottom of the mid-tier group. But also a potential candidate for the mid-tier is the Necropolis Knights. They only cost 100 more than those four 1500 cost units. Now, while the Wild Hunters weren't able to beat the Horned Ones or the Dread Knights or the Grail Knights and they got firmly stomped by the Grail Knights, they do put up an amazingly close fight with the more expensive Necropolis Knights, who they very nearly beat. It's probably only because the Necropolis Knights don't rout and run away that they were able to survive the Wild Riders. If they do rout like normal units, they probably would have gone a long time ago. So fair play to the Wild Riders for putting up a fight against a more expensive unit. But if we want to talk about close matchups, you talk about the Horned Ones and the Necropolis Knights. This was probably the closest match of the whole competition, and you could honestly give it either way. You can see so far it's looking pretty even between the two of them. Although in some areas the Horned Ones do start to edge it with a little bit more damage. These ones slowly breaking down. This one maybe not looking so good for the Horned Ones. It looks like they're slowly running out of juice. But the Wavering's starting to kick in now for the Necropolis boys. They are running out of steam. They are crumbling away, losing extra health as well as taking the damage. And it's looking kind of good for the Horned Ones. But can they hang on? Do they have the leadership to see the Necropolis Knights deaths through to the end? Can they get it done? Oh, the Necropolis Knights have come back. Some wavering from the cold ones. Oh, they're going to break it here. They're going to lose it in this one. Can they win any of them? They've lost it on the edge there. They've got a chance with this one. They've got a little bit more health than the Knights. That could be enough to allow them to hold on with their leadership. They've won one here, and they're going to win on the edge. That's two, the horned ones. Can they win the last one? They goddamn have done it. They've won and beaten the more expensive Necropolis Knights. But it's a 3-2, so we got to run it again, which we did, and that time the Necropolis Knights won, which brings us to this one, where you can see it's pretty even. We've got similar things happening. There's one lost on the edge here for the horned ones. This is pretty much the final between them. Another one lost for the Horned Ones. That's two for the Necropolis Knights. A win here, though, for the Cold Ones. That's 2-1. 3-1 for the Necropolis Knights, though. They're going to do it. Can the Horned Ones at least get a 3-2 to finish it off? We're going to give it to the Necropolis Knights at this point because they've won more of the battles and we can't go on forever testing them. But honestly, you could say it goes either way for the Horned Ones and Necropolis Knights, which is pretty impressive for the Horned Ones beating that more expensive unit, which is something that none of those other four units of the 1500 cost group could do. Grail Knights couldn't beat them either and they didn't come as close as the Horned Ones but interestingly they did put up a reasonable fight against the Fireborn of all people. One of the most expensive units in the goddamn competition. And while the Grail Knights ultimately lost the best of five as you would expect they did actually manage to win one against the Fireborn which is an achievement in itself and came very close in others. See this one here very nearly routed them but they just routed first. The other two not so much but very close and an interesting performance from the Grail Knights, not doing so well against the Necropolis Knights, but really putting the hurt on the Fireborn. And with those Necropolis Knights defeating all of that 1500 cost group, that brings us to the mid-tier results. At the bottom, you've got the Wild Hunters, of course, able to beat all of that bottom tier, but nobody else above them. Coming in very close after them, though, is the Horned Ones, able to beat everyone below, but not quite able to top those Grail Knights, if you really wanted to, you could say, hey, they beat the Necropolis Knights, but that would be a uh, uh, semi-truth. So they're in the middle, and Grail Knights are the ones who are at the top of the mid-tier. Unfortunately for them, not quite able to break into that top five, but that's kind of to be expected, given that they only cost 1,500. And with that, let's roll on into the top five then, the best units. Who is going to make the top three, top two, top one? Well, naturally, you'd think the Necropolis Knights will be down the bottom of the top five, and you'd be right. They are the cheapest in the top five at 1600, and they do struggle against all those above them. Fighting the Swords of Chaos here, who cost 1800, so a bit more expensive than them, and they are going to get pretty badly stomped by the Swords of Chaos here. They put up a bit more of a fight against Blood Knights, who are both undead units, so that was a bit more of a closer one. But ultimately, Necropolis Knights couldn't beat any of the top four, but they could beat everyone below them. Although, only just on the Horned Ones. So, that leaves us with the Swords of Chaos, the Fireborn, the Altdorf Griffites, and the Blood Knights to see who's the best. We've got Fireborn here against the Swords of Chaos, both very fiery units. Let's see who's the fieriest. 
Swords of Chaos, of course, have that much smaller unit size overall, so that is going to be a disadvantage for them, but as we can see here, Swords of Chaos are losing a lot of health, but the Fireborn, they're not losing any health. They're basically not being hurt at all. What is happening? This is the confusion we had on the first run of this until we realized what was going on. The Fireborn have a 70% fire defense, and the Swords of Chaos have fire attacks, so they're doing virtually no damage at all. Which honestly is news to me, even with a thousand hours in the game and hundreds of videos made all about how the game works, I did not know fire works like this. I always thought it was just normal damage with a fire bonus, and if you touch something that's weak to fire, they'll take some extra damage. But no, it turns your entire damage to fire, and if you touch something that has a resistance to it or is weak to it, it'll act accordingly. So in this case, the Fireborn are completely untouched by the Swords of Chaos, as you can see. Pretty crazy. They made the Swords of Chaos look like bumbling children on donkeys at the beach. Fireborn, one up above the Swords of Chaos. But hey, they're not out of it yet. Let's try the Swords of Chaos against the Altdorf Griffites, who are only 50 more expensive than them, as were the Fireborn, but maybe they'll have more luck against a non-fire resistant unit. Done a lot of damage so far. They do hit very hard. Their combat stats are pretty crazy. That's why their unit size is so freaking small. Although the Griffites also have a small unit size. They've only got 24, so it's more than the Swords of Chaos, but still not huge. Both pouring lots of damage into each other. The Griffites do have the advantage of an anti-large bonus as well, which the Swords don't have. So a little advantage for them there, which seems to be paying off. They are getting the better of a lot of these units. Maybe not this one, though. Swords of Chaos might win over here. Looking pretty close in the health. Griffites, one of the best looking units in the game, in my personal opinion. Swords of Chaos routing here though, they're running away, they're running away all across the board, all at the same time. A clean sweep for the Griffites. Okay, the last shot for the Swords of Chaos. They can't beat the more expensive Fireborn or the more expensive Griffites, but can they beat the less expensive Blood Knights? If they can't, they go into fourth place. The Blood Knights are veteran of the game, they've been around a while. If they can beat the Swords of Chaos here, they'll be able to make it into the top three. If they can't beat them, then they'll probably be joint third, I guess? Maybe fourth? Third, probably. Pretty even so far, both taken lots of damage, about down to half health. The Blood Knights, of course, do have the advantage of not routing and running away, which is a luxury the Chaos do not have. They, of course, have that smaller unit size as well. Blood Knights got a nice big 45 unit size. Can that help them survive the Swords of Chaos? Looking pretty close. Blood Knights are edging it in some cases. Blood Knights looking good. Maybe not in this one. Maybe this one's looking pretty good. Lots of health. Can they do it? Can they beat the more expensive Swords of Chaos? Waver in them here. Broken them. Waver in them here. Broken them. Oh shit. Looking bad for the Chaos. If they lose one more. They're going down. Waver in one unit. Oh, the third one's broken. The Blood Knights have won this round. Can they make it a clean sweep though? Blood Knights waver in there. They've won a fourth. That's four for the Blood Knights. Can this one win? Can the Swords of Chaos at least get one of them gone? Well, the answer is uh, no. The Swords of Chaos lose all five of those. A clean sweep for the Blood Knights beating a more expensive Regiment of Renown unit. So here we go then. The top three. The Griffites, the Blood Knights, and the Fireborn. Who's gonna be the best? The Griffites coming in here on the Blood Knights. Big old charge smashing into each other. Griffites, again, like I said, that small unit size. Blood Knight's got a bigger unit size. Maybe that's going to help them out here. A big downside for the Blood Knights, though, is that they lack armor piercing, and the Griffites have a lot of armor, so that might hold them back. Blood Knights getting pretty badly beaten up in some of these fights. They are giving a hell of a lot of damage back to the Griffites, though, so not making it easy by any means. But, hey, maybe being undead and unroutable could have a play here. Could be enough to hold off the Griffites. Not looking good for these ones. Not looking great on the end. They are crumbling, but they are holding on. Oh, they've stabilized. All they've got to do is hold on and just outlast the Griffites in leadership. This one's failed. The middle one's failed. The third one's failed. The fourth one's about to fail. And it's a no. It's a no for the Blood Knights. Unfortunately, they cannot hold off the Griffites. And they lose a clean sweep to the Griffites. Which is somewhat to be expected, as the Griffites do cost 150 more. But a valiant effort from the Blood Knights. But what about the Fireborn? They can't beat the Empire, but maybe they'll be able to bring the Fireborn down to size a bit. They are more expensive than them, like the Griffites, but we'll see. Maybe they could do something. Put a lot of damage out already. Pretty even in the health lost so far. But these two units are kind of similar in that they both have anti-large bonuses. Both aren't armor-piercing, but they do have mighty charge bonuses. But it looks like the Blood Knights are getting pretty hammered here. 
They do have a tiny bit more melee defense than the Fireborn, but the Fireborn have better melee attack, so it's probably helping them out. And I've just kind of noticed how similar these two units look. Their armor looks basically the same, just slightly different coloring. What do you know? Fireborn or a Blood Knight reskin? Who knew? But it's not looking too good for the Blood Knights here. They are losing quite considerably to these Fireborn. And as you might expect, they are going to lose all five of these. A valiant effort, but they did better against the Griffites than they did against the Fireborn. So the Fireborn looking good for that top spot, potentially. They put the Blood Knights into third place here. A valiant effort from the Blood Knights. Nice to see a veteran of the old world still hanging at the top. But here we go to the final with the Fireborn for the High Elves. While they lack armor piercing, which the Griffites do have, they make up for it with a bigger charge bonus, a physical resistance, and a bigger unit size. Will that be enough to help them hold off the Empire's finest, the Royal Altdorf Griffites? They've got that armor piercing and are the sexiest unit in the game, so that is obviously an advantage. So, let's find out right now. With a big charge from both sides, smashing into each other pretty hefty. Neither taking huge damage on that charge, so defense is looking good for both sides. And you can see the advantages of having a bigger unit size here. Some of the Fireborn have kind of flanked around the back and are poking these units in the ass. And the Griffites don't have a clue, or they just don't care because they're that tough. The Griffite models will have more health than the Fireborn models. As there's less of them, they'll just be tougher. But the advantage for the Fireborn is that they can do this and be cheeky and flank around the back, getting in some sneaky stabbing, greenskin style. It's looking pretty even for both sides. The Altdorf Griffites may be edging it in this case. Fireborn gone over here. That's one win for the Griffites. Fireborn gone in the middle. Can these ones hold on? No, they've broken. They've all broken. Four down for the Griffites. One left for the Fireborn. Can they win one? They've got a lot of health over here. They might... Nope, they're gone. Never mind. Never mind. They've had it. The Griffites absolutely stomped the Fireborn. That was over quicker than a Mike Tyson fight. So there you have it. The Royal Altdorf Griffites for the Empire are the best cavalry in the freaking game. Which makes sense as they are one of the most expensive along with the Fireborn. So well played empire they were at the bottom of the infantry fight they only placed second from the bottom with their melee infantry but they are at the top of the cavalry game as you would expect sigmar is jumping out of his seat right now and if we take a look at the final rankings for all this testing you can see that price is a pretty good indicator of where a unit will place and how good it is with cavalry the only anomaly being that blood knights were better than swords of chaos who are more expensive than them but Swords of Chaos might be more of an anti-infantry cav, so that might be why their placement is a bit off. But overall, pretty solid results. So that's including Regiments of Renown. Now the moment a lot of you have probably been waiting for. Non-Regiments of Renown. Let's take a look at the top five. This is who we've got. The Demigriffs with Halberds. The Blood Knights. The Necropolis Knights. The Horned Ones and the Grail Knights. Now I know, some of you may be mortified that there's no Dragon Princes in here, as Dragon Princes are a very strong cavalry, but they're not really built for this kind of testing, and they're cheaper than all these other units at 1400. They don't have armor piercing or an anti-large bonus, so they're really more of an anti-infantry cavalry. If we test these units at anti-infantry, they may be one of the best, maybe top three, maybe the best, who knows. But in this kind of anti-cavalry competition, they really just can't stick it. And the same with the Chaos Knights with Lances. They don't have armor piercing or an anti-large, so they struggle against these armor piercing heavier cavalries. So that's why we have these lot as the top five. And we already know some of the results here. For example, Horned Ones, we know they can't beat Blood Knights, they can't beat Necropolis Knights, and they can't beat Grail Knights. So unless they can beat the Demigriffs here, who do cost the same as them, but the Demigriffs do have the advantage of an anti-large bonus, which the Horned Ones are lacking. We'll have to see though. They hit hard, they've got a lot of armor piercing damage, the Horned Ones, so maybe they can hold them off. They're looking pretty good so far. They're edging it ever so slightly in the damage, I think, over the Demigriffs. You could question their leadership, whether they'll be able to hold on as long as the Demigriffs. Maybe that'll be a Demigriff advantage. But it looks like the Horned Ones are getting the better of the Demigriffs in a lot of these situations. They've done more damage. Got these ones wavering. It's getting close. They've lost this far one, though. They've got a couple of Demigriffs. They've got all the Demigriffs wavering. They've kind of lost in the middle, though. They've broken in the middle. These two left. Can they hold on? Oh, it's all over the place. They've won here. They've lost two and won one. It's coming down to these last two. They've lost the far distance one. So it's looking like the Demigriffs are going to take this either 3-2 or 4-1. Oh, they're wavering. This unit's coming over, though. Oh, that may have interfered with it a little bit there. It is going to go 4-1. We did run this again, though, because it was so close. And unfortunately for the Horned Ones, the Demigriffs did stomp them that time. So in at number five, it's the Horned Ones. What about the Grail Knights, then, against the Demigriffs? Maybe they can top them. 
They cost the same at 1500, and we are going to try out two of the units on the edge here in the Bretonian formation to see if that helps them win at all. And interestingly, it kind of helps them survive a bit longer maybe, but doesn't really help them win. They are wavering the demigriffs here, but they are going to lose all of the other three. The normal three where they weren't in formation, they got pretty badly beaten up. These two are still holding on a bit longer, so maybe it helps their longevity in a fight. But ultimately, they're not going to do much better, to be honest. And what kind of happens is that the Bretonians end up kind of getting enveloped because all the demigriffs are now on the other side of them. So the Bretonian formation kind of got them enveloped and attacked from both sides, which is obviously not a great situation. As you can see here, most of the demigriffs on the original side are dead, but they're all alive on the flanking side. These Bretonian ones, they're going to lose here, so you can see, didn't really help them. Maybe help them do a little bit more damage and survive a little bit longer, but ultimately, it's not really going to help them that much. They did win one. But Bretonians unable to stop the Demigriffs, which does put the Bretonians in fourth place, leaving the Necropolis Knights, who are more expensive than these Halberd Demigriffs, to try and make the stop. We know that Necropolis Knights can beat the Grail Knights and the Horned Ones, but they can't handle Blood Knights, so Demigriffs are the only test left for them to determine whether they get second or third place. Both have anti-large and armor piercing, so it's a pretty even competition. The Tomb Kings have the advantage of not routing though, of course. Maybe that'll play a factor and help them survive the Demigriffs. They're wavering in a bunch of places though, but that's not really a problem. They've done that before and recovered just fine. Demigriffs have won all of them. They won one and then they just won all of them. Demigriffs beating the more expensive Necropolis Knights. So that brings it down to the final then, between the Demigriffs with Halberds and the Blood Knights, as we already know that Blood Knights can beat all of those other top five units. Demigriffs are the last challenge left for them, and they do cost 200 more than Demigriffs, so they should have the advantage here in terms of the stats they've got. They're looking pretty good so far. They are going to be unbreakable like the Tomb Kings, so that's an advantage for them. They are both very even so far. Both put out about the same amount of damage on each other. Some Blood Knights wavering here. They're going to start to crumble a little bit. Demigriffs wavering on the end, though. Oh, Blood Knights wavering back. It's pretty close. Blood Knights and Demigriffs wavering all over the place. It's really freaking even right now. It's impossible to tell who's going to win. Blood Knights not looking so good here. Demigriffs got the advantage, but they've broken one. Blood Knights up one. Can they get any more? Blood Knights up two. Demigriffs up one, though. They've gained one here. Demigriffs up two. Oh, it's coming down to the last one. Demigriffs are wavering. It's bang on even. Blood Knights are crumbling away, though. Oh, it's freaking close. It's two freaking Blood Knights are down. Wait, Blood Knights are down, but Demigriffs also have routed. Who do we call the winner here? It's bang on even. It's a perfect fucking tie. Okay, another round then. Starts out pretty much the same, very even. You can see the larger unit size for the Blood Knights coming into play here. They're able to flank round on these Demigriffs and get a few free shots in the back. That is the downside of a smaller unit size, as we saw earlier. And I did wonder if this would inflict an attack in the rear penalty, because technically they are being attacked from behind, but it is by the same unit, so... Doesn't seem to have an effect though, doesn't really matter. Pretty even still though, Blood Knights wavering, Demigriffs wavering all over the place. Blood Knights going to get one here, can they get any more? Demigriffs got one on the end, that's 1-1. One, one. Both a lot of wavering, Demigriffs have broken here, that's 2-1 for the Blood Knights. Can they go 3-1, 3-2-4-1? Wavering here. They've broken here, that's 3-1 at least for the Blood Knights. Demigriffs bringing it back though to 3-2, making it a goddamn competition. So, too close to call one the winner. Blood Knights have won that round, but we've got to have a decider. It's been bang on even, a win for the Blood Knights. If the Blood Knights win 3-2 again or more, they are going to be the winner. Can the Demigriffs pull it back? We'll have to go into an extra one if the Demigriffs win this one. It's looking not so good for the Demigriffs in some of these matchups, looking pretty bad here. Blood Knights putting a stomping on them. Also here, not looking too good for the Demigriffs. Wavering. They're looking all right on the end. They're crumbling the end Blood Knights. Can they take it? Can they hold on? Can the Blood Knights finish them off? Looks like they might lose one. Blood Knights up one. They've taken one so far. They've taken two. They need one more. Demigriffs just won one right on the end. It's down to these two. It's hideously freaking close. The Blood Knights have done it though. They've won their third one, which means they've won the whole thing. Oh, Demigriffs won the last one, though. 3-2 again. Only just a win for the Blood Knights. One, two, and a three. We'll have to call Blood Knights the winner of this because, you know, this could go on forever. But incredibly close. Considering that the Blood Knights cost 200 more than the Demigriffs, that is an incredible fight. Especially for the Demigriffs as they nearly beat a unit that costs 200 more than them. And with that, does that make them the best? 
technically blood knights are the best because they won but they are more expensive so cost effective wise they're not the best so you can call it whichever way you like sigma would be proud though of the demigriff's performance blood knights though are the best of the best in the non-raw category so then what if we take blood knights give them some steroids juice them up Max rank, rank 9, 3 gold chevrons. They now cost 2,252 gold. Can they top the best of the best in the Royal Altdorf Griffites, who cost considerably less than them, about 400 less than them? Well, let's find out right goddamn now. They come in both hitting very hard. More damage inflicted for the Blood Knights, I think. They've hurt the Griffites more, which makes sense. They do have a bigger charge bonus, especially being ranked up. None of the Demigriff units have a particularly high charge bonus, even the Griffites here. I think the best is the non-Halberd ones. Looking okay-ish for the Blood Knights. They've done more damage overall, I think, although it's very, very close. That one about even. Looks like the Blood Knights are struggling with the prolonged fight. They did well on the charge, but after that, they're a struggling. Three of them are crumbling. Crumbling all of them. Are the Blood Knights seriously about to lose this? They cost 400 more than the Altdorf Griffites. What is happening? They're hanging on by not routing. Nope, that one's gone. This one, very close. They've won one here, the Blood Knights. Is it going to be as close as the normal Demigriffs? They've won two, the Demigriffs, the Griffites even. They've lost one and they've won one. So the Griffites are going to win it 3-2. Oh, make that 4-2 because the other one just disappeared. Does that count as a win? I don't know. But either way, it's stupidly freaking close, which is mad considering that the Griffites cost 400 less than those upgraded Blood Knights. We did run the test again and the Griffites were able to take it 4-1 this time. So solidifying themselves as the GOAT, the greatest of all time. But what about the Grail Knights then? Max rank 3 gold chevron Grail Knights. They come to a cost of 2,000 now. How will they do against the Royal Altdorf Griffites? Less than the Blood Knights, so in theory they shouldn't be able to take them out. But let's find out. They come in pretty even on the charge. Both have the nice anti-large bonus, but no armor piercing for the Grail Knights, which is going to hurt them. Griffites do have that fear and terror as well, which may come into play. And may be a big reason why they beat some of these other cavalries so well. Griffites, though, taking a fair pounding from the Grail Knights. Grail Knights giving it to them are just as good as they're getting them back, even beating them fairly significantly in some areas. You can see the Grail Knights here. They've got considerably more health than the Griffites do. Looks like they're going to win that one at least. Maybe you're going to win this one here. Good health advantage there. This one's pretty even. Looking bad for the Grail Knights in a couple of these. But Bretonian Grail Knights, 2,000 costs, cheaper than the Blood Knights, seemingly maybe doing better than the Blood Knights. They've won these two here fairly significantly. They're going to lose these two very close. And the last one is pretty much a tie. They've both run away. So incredibly goddamn close. You could say the upgraded Grail Knights were better and more efficient at taking on the Griffites than the upgraded Blood Knights, which is crazy given the cost difference again. We did also try the Grail Knights in their formation, charging them into the Griffites to see if that would help them maybe have enough to win. But surprisingly, they actually performed worse when in their little triangle formation, which maybe just suggests that that formation isn't great against other cavalry because they do kind of get a bit surrounded. Maybe that's hurting them. Maybe it's more of an anti-infantry thing than anti-cav. What about upgraded Grail Knights against the Fireborn? Well, they actually put those in the bin pretty damn well. Grail Knights beating the Fireborn when they're fully upgraded. They are more expensive by 150, so you would expect it. But hey, as we found out, price doesn't necessarily mean anything when upgrading units, as the Blood Knights cost 2,252, but they couldn't beat the 400 cheaper Griffites. Can they beat, though, the 2,000 cost Grail Knights upgraded? Well, the short answer is yes, they can. The Grail Knights cannot stop the upgraded Blood Knights. I guess the most expensive cavalry in the game. They're the one that you could get the most money into. But the performance to cost ratio is the question here. Neither of these two upgraded units could beat the Altdorf Griffites, who were cheaper than them. And the cheaper of these two upgraded units, the Grail Knights, did better against the Griffites than the expensive one, the Blood Knights. Just about. It was very close, but you could say the Grail Knights did better. So the question here is really how well balanced are fully upgraded units? If you fully upgrade Blood Knights, are you getting shafted on cost efficiency? It kind of seems that way with the Blood Knights at least, but how unbalanced some of these units are is another question for another day. This video is already too long, so we won't do any more testing for now. We've answered some important questions, but we've also raised a few as well. So there you go. The Empire's Royal Altdorf Griffites are the best cavalry in Warhammer 2 for now.
If you take the regiments of renowned units out of it though, then it's the Blood Knights. But don't upgrade them because apparently they're not really worth the money. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.